Now, I know that this is a big goal, but I feel like enough time has passed, and so if I'm able to convince at least half of the people watching today that both sides of this ship were garbage, then I feel like I've done my job. Hello, everyone. My name is Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel. So, I guess to address this sort of elephant in the room, which is the fact that I have an actual room that we're in today, um, brand new background, brand new era, 2023. It's a new time for the channel. And this is kind of a surreal moment for me because for the past, like, five years or so that I've been making YouTube videos, I've been doing it on my bedroom floor in front of my closet and so to have like an actual room and like space that is now dedicated for filming YouTube videos is such a weird like thing for me to wrap my head around even though I've been making them professionally for the past like two years. But this kind of feels like a step up since I have an actual chair and a desk and my mic and my setup and an actual background for you guys to look at. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just feeling a bit emotional so I just wanted to thank you guys for watching and subscribing and supporting me throughout all these years because without that I wouldn't be uh, where I am today. So thank you guys. I also have lights. So. I'm, I've made it. <laughs> but enough about that. We're here to talk about Girl Meets World today, so let's do that. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with my love story series by now. Basically, I take a ship from a show that I like and then I analyze their whole relationship timeline. And so a couple weeks ago, I covered Cory and Topanga from Boy Meets World. And so I kind of wanted to keep that party going. Now, I don't think I'm quite ready yet to dive into Sean and Angela. I just need more time before I can analyze that show again. But apparently I am ready to torture myself in another way, which is covering the love triangle from Girl Meets World with Lucas, Maya, and Riley. So this is gonna be a bit of a different love story than usual, as this time we're basically covering a polyamorous couple. And it's one in which I have a lot of thoughts on, so much so that I kind of had to limit myself in a way, and so because of that, we're only gonna be talking about the events that were proven to be canon in the series. Now, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments from the people who ship the other popular ships from the show, like Riley and Maya, Riley and Farkle, Maya and Zay, Josh and Maya, but for my own sanity, I'm not gonna be talking about those ships as well. They're only gonna be relevant if one of the characters directly involves themselves in the triangle. I also just wanted to say before we jump right into it, I mean, I don't really talk about it that much, but I just wanted to make it clear that I have nothing against people who do practice healthy polyamorous relationships. I do, however, have something against the way in which it's portrayed in this show, and so I'm excited to talk about it. Um, but yes, with all that being said, let's jump right into chapter one. I believe we have five chapters to go over today, and they're all kind of long, and so I'm excited. Let's jump right into it. We start our story off on season one, episode one. Maya notices Lucas on the subway and she draws Riley's attention to him. And then in a way to teach her a lesson in flirting and being more confident like her, she then proceeds to go up to Lucas, ask him out, and then break up with him in the same breath. Hi, I'm Maya. You're really cute. We should hang out sometime. You make me happy. You don't pay enough attention to me. This isn't working out. It's you, not me. We can still be friends. Not really. Maya then goes on to remove Riley's hand from the bar, causing her to fall directly into Lucas's lap, resulting in their first meeting. And I feel like I should play that one as well, just for comparison's sake. Hi. We were just talking about you. You used to go out with my friend Maya. I'm Lucas. I love it. So of course we then find out that Lucas is a new student in their class who has just recently moved to New York from Texas. And Lucas isn't really that relevant throughout the rest of the first episode besides this one moment where Maya sets off the fire sprinklers in their class and then he covers Riley with his coat and asks her why she didn't stop her and says that she's better than that, which just makes no sense because the three of them just met that day. So how would he know anything about Riley or what she's capable of? It's just a really odd interaction, especially one to have in the first episode. On to episode two, Riley and Lucas are continuing to show interest in one another. Apparently they've been texting a bunch but haven't really been able to talk much in person. So Maya encourages Riley to go talk to him in the hallway, but she ends up smelling him instead. Maya also makes fun of him for the first time in this episode, but apparently that's something that's been going on for some time as after she does it, she says that it kills her that she can't get to him. The gang then moves on to the library to work on their assignments together. And after an awkward moment is shared between Riley and Lucas, he is later able to open up to her about how he wants to be a vet when he's older, which ends up being a very important moment for the couple moving forward. One day after school, Sophia was falling. That means she was giving birth, right? Not too bad, city girl. <laughs> and there was no one there. So I called Dr. Glonda, and he talks me through it. Anyway, that was all. More. Did you know that a baby horse stands in the first hour after it's born? Really? I'd like to have been there for that. The coolest thing I've ever seen. And I was a part of it. Riley? Lucas? I've never told this to anybody before. Yeah? I think someday I might like to be a veterinarian. That's cool too. 
I delivered this beautiful Palomino. I'd show you her picture, but I don't have my phone. That's okay, just keep talking. In the following episode, we see this other girl flirting with Lucas and Riley obsessing over it, but this ends up getting resolved once Lucas shows that he doesn't have any interest in someone who wouldn't also want to hang out with his friends as well. Now, I feel like it's important to note that we're only on episode four here because I personally thought going into this video that the whole like Riley and Lucas having a cute little relationship thing was going on for a lot longer before Maya entered the scene, but apparently that was not the case because we then end up getting this very flirtatious moment between the two of them that just caught me so off guard. Hey, Miha, you going to TikTok shake your body time? Because you know, it's not a square dance, so not gonna be a whole lot of do si do -in. Well then, I'm sure I'll have no idea what to do and you can make fun of me. You're not playing this right. Oh, well, that's certainly not my intention. I'll try harder next time. I will break you. Well, if that's what makes you happy, then I certainly can't wait for it. Ma'am. <laughs> And I feel like that moment in particular was such a highlight for me because I had just sat through four episodes of them trying to convince me that Riley and Lucas were a thing. And then we have this one little scene between Lucas and Maya and suddenly it's like, oh, like that's the ship. That's the real story here. And I just feel like the tension and chemistry that these two actors had with one another was just so obvious from the start. I mean, take this episode, for example, we're at a school dance, Riley and Lucas are dancing together very far apart, might I add. But then once again, it's the moment between Maya and Lucas where he gives her the rose he was saving in his hat for her that ends up stealing the whole show. But back to Riley and Lucas now because the show has to make sure that we're not getting distracted here. So in the following episode, we see the kids putting on a production of Romeo and Juliet with Riley and Lucas as the leads. But more importantly, the episode ends with Farkle stealing Riley's first kiss. I mean, it's on the chin, but Riley and Maya still seem to count it, which brings Lucas to say that Farkle stole his moment. And this scene is another important one for the couple moving forward. So I guess just like keep it in the back of your mind maybe because it does get brought up again at the end. Hi. Hi. How long you been here? Yeah, I saw the whole thing. I just can't believe that little guy stole my moment. Again. You thought that was your moment? No. Oh. My moment will be my moment. Anyways, the rest of the first season continues on with hardly any Riley and Lucas development, but lots of Lucaya moments. She continues to tease him in the following episodes and we get our first ha her in episode 10, which I completely forgot about how adorable his reaction was to that the first time. In the next episode, we have the I'm taking you out comment from Lucas in regards to their baseball game in which Maya replies that he's not her type. In episode 13, Lucas picks Maya up to stop her from going after Farkle's bully and then she returns the favor to him when she jumps on his back to stop him from doing the same thing. Then we have the student election episode in which Riley and Maya help Lucas win, and then once he does, he makes Maya his secretary of state, which results in this random kid saying that that means that he thinks very highly of her. But I guess more importantly, he tells Riley that she is a princess when asked what she is to him. Then the rest of the season continues on with not much ship development from either sides until episode 20, Girl Meets First Date. As you can tell by the title of this episode, this one is all about Riley and Lucas having their first date with one another, but interestingly enough, this episode starts off with Maya asking out Lucas in an attempt to show Riley just how easy it is. And I think a a lot of Lucaya shippers really like this moment, but I personally don't really see it as anything more than a reference to Boy Meets World when Sean asked out Topanga because Corey was too scared to do so himself. So Lucas ends up coming over and asking for Corey's permission to ask Riley out, which he ends up agreeing to, but on the condition that Maya and Farkle go too. So like a double date sort of situation. So they all meet up for their date and Lucas says some words that I think are supposed to be romantic, but kind of come across a little bit awkward to me, but I get that it was an important line that comes up again later in the end of the episode. So I guess I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Even though this just happened, there are some moments you know you're gonna remember forever. This is one of them. Then the episode ends with Maya doing the same thing that she did in the first episode with making Riley fall into Lucas's lap, and this is when the two end up sharing their first kiss. Hi, I'm Riley. We were just talking about you. <laughs> I'm Lucas. I love it. You know those moments that we were talking about that we're going to remember forever? Yeah. And that's actually where the first season ends as far as these ships are concerned, so on to season two. So besides an awkward hello in the second episode of this season, we actually don't get a continuation of the kiss plotline until the third episode. And basically in this episode, the two are unsure of how to define their relationship now that they've kissed. We also have this great moment where Lucas finds out about Maya's middle name and then teases her for it, and then she in turn teases him about the kiss. Penelope? Really, Huckleberry? You want to play with me right now? No. Because you've done quite enough, haven't you? Maya? 
Maya. And then this is when the rest of their class finds out about the kiss and they start pressuring them to define what they are. This leads the two of them to going out on another date now as boyfriend and girlfriend, but this new pressure that they're feeling has made everything more awkward and they're no longer able to just talk to one another like they used to. Then after a conversation with Topanga, they decide that they shouldn't let other people influence their relationship or what they are. And so they decide to break up. This brings them to hanging out once again, this time as friends, no more labels. And we get this wonderful improvised scene from Rowan. You know anything about sports? No. no? <laughs> Any sports? Like, what about basketball? You know anything about basketball? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe? Well, we're in New York, so obviously my favorite team are the Knicks. And, you know, this may not be our best year, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because we have Melo and we have Phil Jackson, and that's all that counts. We shouldn't have traded J.R. Smith. And at the end of the day, you know what? It's not our best season. We have a terrible record, but they're worse in the NBA. I am at Madison Square Garden. I see all these fake fans just jumping onto bandwagons like the heat or something like that. And you know what? That is not what a true fan is. If you're going to be in the Garden, you better represent the Knicks. <laughs> I don't know that much, obviously. I really like you, Riley. So now that they're back to being just friends who like each other, that means it's time to talk about Lucas and his dark past. In the next episode, Zay, one of Lucas's friends from Texas, moves to New York and starts talking about the type of guy Lucas was back home. This is also when we come to find out that Lucas is a year older, which I feel like might have been done to explain why he looks so much older than Riley, especially in those earlier episodes, which makes sense because he is older. Peyton Meyer is three years older than Rowan, which isn't really that big of an age gap, but it definitely made things a little bit more awkward back in the first season when Rowan was only 13 and he was 16. Anyways, back to Lucas being a bad boy, so Riley now thinks that she's entitled to knowing absolutely everything about him because she had her first date with him, but Lucas argues that she does know everything she needs to know based off of his current actions. Riley then goes on to explain that she doesn't care about what he did, it's more so just the fact that he didn't tell her, which is something that I can definitely get behind. It's the fact that they've been close friends for over a year doing this whole will they, won't they thing, and then to find out that he's been keeping this big secret from her, like, I can definitely understand why she's feeling a bit betrayed in this moment. And it must hurt feeling as though he doesn't trust her with this information, when in reality he just wants to have this fresh start and not be defined by the person that he was before. It's definitely a situation where I can see both sides, but then even though Riley says that it's not about what he did, it's the fact that he didn't tell her, she then goes on to spray him with a hose asking him what he did. And so I'm just like, pick a lane. Is it about the secrecy or is it about the actual thing that he did? I mean, I'm sure it was a bit of both, but still. So after the two share their little water fight, we end up getting this confrontation, which also ends up being our resolution to the whole thing. <laughs> Are you worth it? Yes. <laughs> So I know this is kind of a weird spot to shift gears here as we're kind of in the middle of an episode, but it will make more sense later on. So let's move on to chapter two. Okay, so the reason why I chose here to move on to chapter two is because there's one moment near the end of this episode that really solidifies for me that Maya has now started to develop some sort of feelings for Lucas, whether she's aware of this or not. So at the end of this episode, we get to see a bit of Lucas's bad boy self come through and Maya seems to have a positive reaction to this, which continues to be a thing throughout the series. A couple episodes later, we get our first Lucaya shirt grabbing moment when she threatens Zay by grabbing him by his shirt and then Lucas takes her hand off of his shirt and puts it on him instead. But I think one of the most important Lucaya episodes is up next with Girl Meets Rules. So basically their class is in detention and they end up splitting off into two sides, Riley Town versus Mayaville. Obviously Riley Town is all about being good and following the rules, whereas Mayaville is a rebellion, so the complete opposite. And so Lucas, seeking adventure, I guess, decides to join Mayaville and that's when we end up getting this very iconic moment that had no right being as flirty as it was. If there's no good kids out here noticing us, then what's the point? You questioning my leadership, Hop Along? Okay, these names you're calling me are killing my street cred. Oh, and what would you like me to call you? I'd like you to call me Mad Dog. You don't seem like a mad dog to me. Well, what do I seem like to you? You know that lamb that Mary had? I don't like the way that this is going. <laughs> And then for comparison's sake, at the end of the episode, Riley and Lucas also have a conversation about nicknames while she's cleaning off his face. You know, they call me Mad Dog. Of course they do. Would you call me Mad Dog? Would you call me Princess Dancing Sunshine? No, I would not. Well, there you go. 
But nonetheless, I feel like at this point, the show has noticed the fans shipping Maya and Lucas. They've seen the chemistry and this is when they decide to play into it. So our episode 12, Girl Meets Yearbook, which starts off with Maya's biggest ha her to date, which also ends with a lip bite, which I feel like gives the whole interaction a completely different meaning than probably intended. But the real point of note in this episode is that Maya and Lucas were voted best couple in their yearbook instead of Riley and Lucas. This causes Riley to go on a dark spiral and in an attempt to get her back along with Farkle, who is also not acting like himself, Maya decides to take her mother's advice and become Riley. And I feel like this moment is interesting because I think we can take it in two ways. We can say that it's foreshadowing to the events of season three, which I personally think is very unlikely, or we could take it in the way that I personally feel like it was originally intended, which was for Maya to discover something about Riley's feelings for Lucas, which in turn ends up impacting her own feelings for him. Because like I said, I feel like at this point, Maya does have feelings for Lucas, but she's pushing them down because of Riley's feelings for him. And despite what the show tries to convince you of later on, I personally don't think Maya would have ever acted upon her feelings for Lucas if Riley didn't tell her it was okay to. So Maya has a conversation with her mom and she tells her to be careful because she says that becoming someone else could mean that you end up discovering something about them that not even they know themselves, which ends up being exactly what happens. I mean, as far as season two is concerned, at least, season three likes to pretend that this whole brotherly revelation didn't even happen. So Maya dresses up like Riley and proceeds to act like her in the following class, which brings her to the discovery that she feels as though Riley's love for Lucas is more of like a sibling's love than a romantic love. Aww, Lucas, you're a very sweet guy. That's why I always liked you since I fell into your lap on the subway. It's why we should have been favorite couple because we're so much alike. You know, it's like we're two sunshiny people from the same sunshiny family. That's why I like you so much. It's like you're my brother. Oh. It's, it's like he's your, what? Whoa, what just happened? Now, although Maya is very confident in this revelation, I'm not really too sure I agree with her. Now, back in 2015, when I was a hardcore Lukaya shipper, I did 100% because it was an easy way to argue why Lukaya was superior. Like Maya had this big revelation about how Riley feels about Lucas and her mom warned her that this could be something that could happen. Not to mention Maya knows Riley better than anybody else. And so it's just like, how could you ship them after that? Like clearly their love is more platonic. But I personally feel like that mindset kind of ignores the person in which we're getting that information from. Like I said, this is just my personal perspective on things, but I personally feel like at this point in time, Maya does have feelings for Lucas, whether she's aware of this or not, and so that automatically makes her an unreliable source. She has an ulterior motive here because if she's able to get Riley's feelings for Lucas to change, then she wouldn't feel as guilty about having them for him herself. But all of that aside, I do genuinely feel as though from this point on, Maya thinks that Riley's feelings for Lucas are more brotherly, or at least for the rest of this season, because like I said, the third season likes to forget about this plotline's existence in general. Whether it's because she actually feels that way or because it helps her cope with her own feelings is unknown, but that's just my own personal take on things. So now Maya is very confused and we see this in the following episode when Riley asks her what her and Lucas are and she says that she doesn't know anymore. But this whole episode is about this dance that they have coming up and how Lucas hasn't asked her yet, which brings Charlie Gardner to ask her instead, which prompts Lucas and to say that he just assumed that they'd be going together. And this whole thing doesn't really end up getting resolved. I just personally find it annoying when people will like refuse to label a relationship, but then still want the implications of one. I just personally feel like it causes more harm than good and I just wish that these two characters were better at communicating what they actually want from one another. But yeah, that was basically this episode. There was also this one moment where Lucas and Maya danced together that seemed to put a really big smile on Maya's face, but I can't play it unfortunately because of the copyright music that was playing in the background, but nonetheless, that was this episode. We do get some more Lucaya moments in the following episode though when Lucas yells about wanting Maya to be happy and when Maya finds out through Zay that he would refer to Maya as the blonde beauty when he would talk to Zay about his friends in New York. People lost interest in art and music because it was taken away from them. Well, I don't want that from Maya. I want Maya to be happy. Hey, Maya, look like Lucas here getting all fired up on your behalf. <laughs> Thank you, Lucas, but it's just an art class. I feel bad. They're taking away something you're very good at. You never said that to me before. I've said it. Yeah, but not like straight to my face when you were looking at me. I can't remember you actually. You're a great me. artist, Maya. Well, he looking at you now. <laughs> Now, I feel like this next plot line could very much so fit into this Lucaya chapter, but I feel like I have to make it its own thing. So on to chapter three, which is the Texas episodes. So all this brings us to season two, episode 20, which is of course, Girl Meets Texas. So we start off with Riley and Maya signing up Lucas for the annual bull riding tournament in Texas, thinking that it's a sheep riding tournament instead. So this ends up with the whole gang traveling to Texas to watch him compete. It also results in Riley and Maya spending all of their travel allowance on some country outfits, which ends up getting this reaction out of Lucas. Quit looking at us, Huckleberry. 
I'm sorry, Maya. You look good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you both look good. <laughs> And so we're in Texas now. It's all fun and games until the girls see footage of the bull that Lucas is going to have to ride and what happened to the rider from the previous year. This creates two very different reactions from Maya and Riley with Maya being upset with them as she's clearly very concerned as to what might happen to Lucas if he does ride that bull. On the other hand, Riley is very supportive of Lucas and encourages him to do it if that's what he really wants. And I feel like this exchange is very telling and very representative of the two girls and just how different they are. Which is funny because if we go by season three's explanation for Maya's feelings for Lucas, it would be because she became Riley. So if she did become Riley, why isn't she acting the same way that Riley's acting in reaction to all of this? Like, I personally feel like that's a huge plot hole, but maybe that's just me. Anyways, Maya goes on to give Lucas the ultimatum that if he rides the bull, she'll never speak to him again. Whereas on the other hand, he asks Riley to watch, and she does while also encouraging him and cheering him on. And I'll be honest, back in 2015, I loved Maya's reaction to all of this. I loved the tension it created and how it was our first blatantly obvious tell that Maya had actual feelings for Lucas, and I thought it was a much more interesting reaction than the one Riley Riley gave. But watching all of it back now, as an adult, I was conflicted and I didn't really know why I was conflicted until I talked to my boyfriend about it and he told me to picture it as if he was in that situation and how I feel like I would react. And personally, I feel like I would be Riley, like obviously I would be scared, but if this was something that he felt like he needed to do to right some sort of wrong in his life, then obviously I'd be super supportive and encourage him even if it meant that he could get hurt in the end. And I personally feel like that's what a supportive girlfriend would do and so I just have to be Team Rukas for this one, which is probably why I was so conflicted because a part of me is still holding on to that like Lucaya shipper that I was way back when. Anyways, Lucas ends up riding the bull and survives. He actually ends up breaking a record for it. So of course we get this cute moment with him and Riley where she tells him that she knew he could do it. But all this brings us to this conversation between Maya and Riley where Riley realizes that Maya has feelings for him and she calls her out for it. You couldn't watch him because you were afraid something would happen to him. Because you like him. You make fun of him because you like him. And you've never told me that either. Well, you're right. I love him like a brother. That's how I love him. So now that Riley has realized that Maya has feelings for Lucas, she decides to immediately step aside for her, saying that she's right, that she loves him like a brother, when I think we all know that that's not really the case. Nonetheless, she decides to go on and tell Lucas that they don't work together as a couple and that she sees them more as having a sibling dynamic. Hey, Lucas, can I talk to you? Actually, I have something to say to you, Riley. If it wasn't for you, I don't know if I would've got on that bowl. And if it wasn't for you, I don't know if I would've survived in New York. You're really important to me. You're really important to me too, Lucas. We've always been really good at talking to each other. But we've never been too good at holding hands. And then we tried being a couple and we couldn't even talk to each other. I don't want that. I want to know you're always there to talk to. You're my brother, Lucas, and I'm your sister. That's what you think we are? That's what I think we are. Now, what I really don't like about this scene is what happens afterwards, how she goes on to directly call Maya out in front of everybody, asking her how she feels about Lucas. This part in particular is so frustrating for me because Maya herself has yet to confirm her feelings for Lucas, and so I imagine that this is because she's still trying to grapple with those feelings herself. And then for Riley to just call her out like that in front of everyone, I just feel like is so uncalled for. I get that she's trying to push her and whatever, but it's so not her place to do so, and Maya should be the one to decide when she's ready to act on her feelings or not. But that's actually where we end part one, so on to part two. So Riley is acting relieved about her new sibling relationship with Lucas, saying as though it helps her feel more comfortable around him, but the whole exchange feels very forced to me. You know what else? I don't get nervous when I'm with you anymore. We're doing the right thing. Uh, remember when we couldn't even say hi to each other? Remember how we go, hi, howdy, hi, remember? Now watch this, say hi to me. Hi. Hi, Lucas, what up, bruh? What's up with you, man? You good? You cool? 
Meanwhile, Maya is feeling very lost, clearly not able to understand her own feelings yet or the right way to act upon them. But Riley is too focused on trying to put Maya above herself and so she just tries to reassure her that there's nothing that she could do that could change their friendship. And then I think in the attempt to help Maya, once again, she ends up telling Lucas that Maya has feelings for him. Which again, I don't think it was Riley's place for her to do this and it makes me really upset that she did, but I guess I'll just play the scene for you all so that you can be the judge. Maya likes you. Riley! She's been hiding it all this time. It's why she couldn't watch you at the rodeo. What are you doing? I saw you, Maya. I saw how much you cared. It's why she makes fun of you, I think. Riley, what are we? I told you what we are. What if that's not what I think we are? Well, then, you better start thinking of us like that. But now that Riley has left after delivering that bombshell, it means it's time for the Lucaya campfire scene, which I'm sure any Disney Channel fan from this era could probably recite this scene word for word, but it's one of my favorite moments from the entire series and one of the things I was looking forward to the most for this video. So yeah, I'm gonna play it anyways, and I hope you enjoy. So you don't make fun of me because you like me? I'm just gonna watch this fire. Maya, why do you make fun of me? Because you're easy to make fun of. Okay, then stop. Because you're a huckleberry. Because you're a ranger. Would you stop? Look, if I had feelings for you, don't you think I'd just come right out and say it? Well, I don't. So what I do say is, ha ha. Why did you do that? I don't know. I just wanted you to stop. <laughs> Please don't tell my sister. You couldn't think of another way to stop me? Not at the time, no. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry, Huckleberry. Of course I like you. You're a good guy. If you got hurt, I don't know what I would have done. Now, I don't think I have anything to say about the campfire scene that hasn't already been said. I've expressed numerous times in the past that it's one of my favorite moments from the entire series, and I do still think it is really well done to this day. But I feel like in the past, I've complained about the lack of a kiss or the fact that one was cut from the end of this scene. And I do still think it would have been fun to see a kiss here just because I love the drama and honestly, they act like that's what happened anyways. But after coming back to the series years after the fact and being able to analyze everything with a new lens, I just don't think a kiss in this moment would have made much sense for Lucas and his character. Because up until this this point, he has yet to show any sort of romantic interest in Maya besides those few like flirty comments here and there. So him taking the initiative to kiss her would have been so out of left field and I'm actually glad that they cut it and I feel like I'm finally able to understand why they did. Okay, so I know that I just said that I don't think Lucas had any feelings for Maya at this point, but I do think that it is post campfire that they start to develop and we see that in the following episode. <laughs> My brother. Hey, hi. Hey, Riley. You know, um, I want to thank you again for believing in me and giving me the confidence that I would be okay. I will always believe in you. And I will always be here. Thank you, Riley. Hi. Hey. Hey. Hi. Wow. This is just my own interpretation, but I feel like you can tell based off of this first scene between the three of them that Lucas is starting to question how he feels for Maya, but he's clearly still caught up on his feelings for Riley as well. So Maya tells Riley that something happened between her and Lucas, which brings Riley to agreeing to go out on a date with Charlie Gardner. So with Riley proving to be pretty adamant about this whole brother thing, Maya and Lucas then end up on a date in which Maya pours a smoothie over his head after he tries to tell her the same story he first told Riley. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but in season three, she explains that she did this because he was just so perfect and she wanted to mess him up a little bit. And that could be part of it. Maybe she was confused as to why she had any sort of interest in him and he seemed just like way too nice for her in that moment. But I personally interpreted this as him trying to rehash the same stuff he told Riley and her getting upset by this. Like her and Riley are best friends, so obviously she would know that it was this conversation that him and Riley bonded over. And so I feel like she was annoyed by him in that moment and I would be too because she's not Riley. They're very different and so he can't just expect to do the exact same thing and win her over as well. Which I also think is funny because again, if we go by season three's explanation for Maya's feelings, this 
should have worked because apparently she was Riley at this time, right? So why wasn't she just like falling all over him after he did the same thing? Anyways, we then have this conversation between Maya and Riley where I think Maya realizes something that Lucas liked about Riley, which is the fact that she was someone that he could tell his stories to. And I think Maya is realizing that she doesn't feel like she can be that person for him, which I think is another reason why she poured that smoothie over his head. And then we have this great confrontation between Riley and Lucas when Riley is getting ready to go on her date with Charlie and Maya interrupts asking her what she talks to Lucas about. Hey, Riley, what do you do when you sit next to Huckleberry? Maya, I can't give you advice like that. Sure you can. You're his sister, right? Nope, not anymore. Why? Augie says we can't. Hey, Fryer. And you know what? I think he's right. You already have a great brother. Hey, Fryer. <laughs> then what will you be? He'll be me because it's, it's, it's me now. And honestly, I'm on Lucas's side throughout this whole scene. Like Riley already has a brother and I feel like it was really rude of her to try to force him into this new relationship without taking the time to care about how he feels about this whole situation. And so it was honestly really nice to see him finally standing up for himself. But then we end up seeing Farkle and Riley switch places and the fact that remember before when Riley was trying to expose Maya's feelings in front of everybody? Yeah, now Farkle is attempting to do the same thing, but to Riley. So she pulls him away before he can say anything. And we end up getting this long scene with lots of flashbacks between both ships. And it ends with Farkle saying that if she she doesn't come clean about her feelings for Lucas, then he will. And that, my friends, is where we end the Texas episodes. But I personally feel like this plotline doesn't really come to an end until we get to like the New Year's episodes. And so we're gonna stay on this train just for a little while longer. So we don't really get much ship development until that New Year's episode, but I do wanna highlight one moment in episode 24 where Maya and Lucas have this conversation about beliefs and higher power. I just feel like it was worth noting because I feel like oftentimes Lucaya and Tees like to argue about the fact that these two are not able to talk to one another when that was clearly not the case as we saw so here. But but enough talk, let's jump right into the New Year's episode. So this one starts off with a conversation between Maya and Riley in which they're talking about the campfire scene and Maya says that she didn't hate it. Not really that relevant of a moment, but it's one of my personal faves and so I just had to mention it. So Riley decides to host a New Year's Eve party and invites everyone and Farkle says that if she doesn't come clean about how she feels by midnight, he will. So this brings us to the party where everyone is playing this couples game with Riley and Charlie on one team, Maya and Lucas on the other, and Farkle and Smackle are there too. Some tension is created when Lucas gets upset by Charlie knowing the exact right answer to one of Riley's questions. And then when he gets a card that asks him to choose between campfire or a library, he ends up eating it. And then Maya goes on to do the same thing when she's asked if it's possible for one person to love two people at the same time. And then we get this really nice conversation between Maya, Corey, and Topanga where Maya says that she's a mess, confused, and torn apart by feelings that she doesn't understand, which just really made me feel for her in that moment. And I wish I could just give her a big hug. So this brings us up to the roof where everybody is coupling up, waiting for midnight. And then we get this nice moment between Maya and Lucas. Is spot taken? I was saving it. For who? I don't know anymore. Hey, Lucas. Yeah? Have I ever said anything nice to you? No. Well, it's one minute to midnight, and I'm glad you're standing here. Wow, that kind of makes up for everything. Obviously a standout for me in this moment is when Lucas says that he doesn't know who he's saving the spot beside him for. Because like I mentioned earlier, I think he is developing feelings for Maya throughout all of this, which has just left him even more confused because I don't think that they are as strong as the feelings that he clearly has for Riley as well. Which is also complicated because she's basically forcing him to be with Maya. And so I just can't even imagine what's going on in his head right now. But none of that really matters because we never actually got to see him explore his feelings for Maya because this is when Farkle ends up keeping his word and telling everybody that Riley still loves Lucas right at the stroke of midnight. And that's also where we're going to be wrapping up this chapter as the triangle definitely takes over from here as the events of Texas are kind of in our rearview mirror now, unfortunately. And so on to chapter four. So now we enter a new era in which Lucas decides that the right thing to do in this situation is just be completely complacent in all of this and just go with whatever Riley and Maya decide, which we see in episode 29. Because both of you are special to me and Whatever way you'll eventually tell me. <laughs> Now, my interpretation of this situation is basically just what I've been saying all along, which is that Riley is the one that Lucas wants to be with. But since they just went through this whole thing where Riley was constantly telling Lucas that they couldn't be together and relating their relationship to a sibling dynamic and basically pushing her best friend onto him, I can just imagine that this really messed with the dude's head. And so him not really being able to find his voice is honestly not that surprising to me. And also from what we know about Lucas is that he's trying hard to be the nice guy in the situation. And so now he's probably really scared about doing something that could hurt Maya, which would obviously in turn end up hurting 
hurting Riley as well. The unfortunate thing about all of this though is that by not saying how he feels, he's just hurting everyone else even more in the process. And I personally find it annoying how everyone plays it off in the show like Lucas is such a nice guy, it was Riley from the start, but he didn't want to say anything because he didn't want to hurt anybody. When I personally feel like if he really was this nice guy like everyone claims that he is, he would have just said something from the start instead of dragging it out because that's obviously the nicer thing to do. But I will give him some credit in the fact that, like I said, they mess with his head a lot and also the fact that like he is still learning as to like what being a nice guy actually looks like. But this brings us to the finale in which we get more of just Lucas being annoying as far as I'm concerned. Like listen, I understand that this guy has been through a lot, but I just wish that they could have showed that in some other way. Anyways, he shows up with cue cards and says that they need to make a decision about what's going on between the three of them, but then no decision is actually made until he comes back later and says that he's decided that they're all going to be just friends because he doesn't want to lose either one of them. Things then turn to chaos as the three of them start acting like a toxic polyamorous couple where Lucas can't give one of them a compliment without also complimenting the other. What? I looked at Riley. I know, I saw. So I'm looking at you to even it up. Oh, well, a girl always wants to be looked at to be evened up. We're just friends and I love your outfit. Hey! Your hair smells nice. You smelled her hair? Lucas, I'm dying here. And this whole thing just makes no sense to me because the previous decision was for them all to be just friends. And as you can tell from that scene, that's not exactly how friends act. But I guess they're just as confused themselves because then we have this scene where Riley says that they thought that they were just friends and Lucas says that they're not. And so I guess we're right back where we started and this whole episode was pointless. I mean, I guess besides the fact that we actually have our first confirmation that Lucas likes both of them as up until now, he's never actually said that he does have any sort of feelings for Maya, which he still doesn't exactly do here. But the question was if he likes both of them to which he replies, yes to. Still like him? Yeah. You? Yeah. Still like him? Yeah. So now we're on to season three in which we start the season off with more of them just acting like an unhealthy poly couple. We've got Riley saying that Maya has to fight with him just as much as she does, which just results in Maya saying ha her a bunch. And then we have both of them wanting to be referred to as Lucas's girlfriend. What's your name? Lucas. And these are my, how would you like to be called? A girlfriend. And how would you like to be a called? A girlfriend equally as much. Then we have the Jessica plotline in episode three where Riley makes this fake online profile that everyone seems to love and Lucas says that he wants to invite this person into their friend group. Then the episode ends with him saying that he knew that it was Riley all along as he can recognize her anywhere and Maya gets jealous by this. But thankfully this whole treat us equally thing doesn't last much longer as we get our first introduction to the Maya became Riley plotline next, which now that I've just said that out loud, I'm not really too sure that that's any better. So in episode five, they decide that once again, they need to make a decision about the triangle and we get this weird conversation between Maya and Riley Riley, where Riley is basically just yelling at Maya the whole time, trying to get some sort of reaction out of her. What? There's no Maya thing. I'm the same Maya I've always been. The Maya you've always been would take nothing from nobody. He went after your art. Maya, your art is who you are. The guy went after who you are. Do you think it should just be us who decides about Lucas? Why do you keep on changing the subject? The subject is you. Because I think that Lucas should decide too. I think it should be all of us. I'm going to take Lucas. What? What are you going to do about it? I liked him first. He's my boyfriend, and I don't think that you should have anything to do with him. What are you going to do about that? Now that I've heard you say it, do you think I've been selfish? What? You can't have him. He's mine. What are you going to do about that? I don't want you to think of me like that. I think of you as somebody who would never let me say what I'm saying to you. I think of you as somebody who would fight for what she believed in. Even me, especially fight me. Maya. If you like Lucas, then you're gonna have to take him from me. You'd let me? No! No, I wouldn't. You know why? Because you taught me that. You taught me that. Maya. Yeah? Where are you? What? Where did you go? Now, I personally feel like Riley is just so out of touch in this moment, and I find it really frustrating to watch her in this scene. Somehow, she's forgotten about the fact that Maya is her best friend and would never do anything to hurt her. So her argument that the old Maya would fight her and take Lucas away from her is just so off base. It makes no sense with what we previously know about these characters. I also hate how she says that she wouldn't let Maya take Lucas away from her and that she was the one who taught her that, when if anything, it's the complete opposite. In case you guys forgot, although I highly doubt it because we literally just went over it, the whole first season of the show was 
Maya stepping aside so that Riley can be with Lucas and pushing down and ignoring her feelings. And then when Riley found out that Maya did have feelings, she immediately stepped aside for her. And so I'm not really too sure what's gotten into Riley in this moment. I think maybe she's just so fed up with the triangle and this whole situation that they're in that she's just like trying to use Maya as an escape goat. But either way, I just don't like it. Then we have a glimpse as to what Lucas is going through as we have a scene with him deciding between the two girls and he decides to use the same jelly bean technique that we saw in Boy Meets World with Corey deciding between Topanga and Lauren. But we still don't actually find out his decision until the Ski Lodge episode. Back to Riley and Maya. Riley is now convinced that Maya has become her because she is dressing like her in one episode, likes Lucas, and hasn't rebelled in a while. Maya, I only talked about it, but you actually did it. You became me. Riley, just because I'm wearing an outfit similar to yours doesn't make me you. Hair. Just because I'm wearing my hair like you today, it doesn't make me you. Maya. Clothes and hair, big deal. Name me one thing of real significance that you and I share in common that has to do with the inside, that affects us emotionally. Why are you, why are you doing that? Because you can't get past hair and clothes, can you? Riley, I'm me. I've always been me, I'm always gonna be me. Nothing's gonna change that. Lucas. <laughs> it's not just Lucas. What, there's more? Maya, you haven't stood on a teacher's desk or been in detention for a long time. You sold your house in Mayaville and you moved to Riley Town. I must like it. Go home. What's wrong with us both liking a nice guy? Louis. What's wrong with who I am now? Maya, the world has one of me. The world needs one of you. My voice is still my voice, Riley. You're gonna need to show me a lot more than clothes and hair and a boy before I believe that it isn't. You want me to go home? I'll go home. Okay, so I have a lot of things to comment on in this scene. First of all, let's talk about Maya's lack of rebellion recently. This is just a thought, but I don't know. Maybe Maya has just been a bit too caught up with this whole love triangle garbage that she hasn't exactly had the opportunity to rebel. I also don't understand why her lack of rebellion is seen as a bad thing, and I find it really hard to watch her get penalized for becoming a better person. Like, what happened to people change people. That's one of the main lessons of this show. Like, Riley is a positive influence on Maya, which is a good thing and should be celebrated. I don't understand why we're trying to convince her otherwise or taking that as meaningful she became her. It just makes no sense to me. Then there's the Lucas factor. Riley is now arguing that her liking Lucas is proof that she became her. But I think it's important to note that Maya never liked Lucas in the same way that Riley did. From what we previously saw, Maya liked him because of his bad boy past. We saw her on numerous occasions get excited at the idea of him beating somebody up. Like, that's just something you can't ignore. She also liked him because of their bickering and flirtatious tension, like both things that Riley and Lucas do not have in common with them. I also feel like one of the main things that the show has done up until this point was point out how different Riley and Maya are and how different they would be for Lucas. And so to then have them say that it's all because Maya became Riley and that's the only reason why Lucas would ever reciprocate her feelings towards him or vice versa is just so delusional. And then there's the argument that Maya makes where she says that her voice is still her voice, which I couldn't agree more with. Riley is obviously not listening to her in this situation and I feel like this may be a big claim, but I personally feel as though this is when the gaslighting of Maya started. Riley just makes this claim that apparently Maya became her and then suddenly everyone else is also jumping on this bandwagon. And I just can't imagine Imagine how hard this must have been for Maya. Like imagine everyone in your life starts telling you that you became your best friend and you need to get back to being your true self. Like I don't know what would go on in my mind. I feel like I'd believe it. And I hate to say this because I don't think it is the case, but I just have to point out that Riley does kind of have ulterior motives in this. She likes Lucas. She wants the triangle to end. She doesn't want to hurt Maya. A great way to get her out of the picture would just be to convince her that who she really is is somebody who would never like Lucas. It's a twisted theory, I know, and I honestly don't think Riley really is that manipulative. I think the real fault here is just bad writing, but it's a theory that I came up with and wanted to share anyways, because honestly, that's more interesting than just the fact that it was probably just bad writing. But now that I've gotten that, tangent out of the way we can get back to this episode which ends with Lucas making the announcement that he has made a decision. But it doesn't really matter because it still takes him a few more episodes to actually do anything about it. In the next episode the girls travel to visit Sean to try to find the real Maya and this is where Maya really jumps aboard the whole I became Riley train as we see her in the end of the episode tell Lucas that it doesn't matter who he picks because either way he chose Riley. You make a decision about us Ranger Rick? I did. Yeah? Well it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, we've been waiting for like two years. <laughs> it doesn't matter because you picked Riley. What? How do you know? Yay! Oh, I'm so sorry, Maya. Yay! 
<laughs> because no matter who you picked, you picked Riley. You pick her, you got Riley. You pick me, you got Riley. Because that's who I've been lately. What do you want to do? I need to decide whatever way I like you, and not whatever way the little merry sunshine part of me skipping around in there likes you. <laughs> okay, I don't skip. You skip. It's the safest way to travel. <laughs> like I said, this makes no sense because Maya hasn't been acting like Riley in regards to her feelings for Lucas or in any of their relationship scenarios, so not really too sure what Maya is going on about here, but whatever. In the following episode, we go through this whole thing with Maya trying to find herself again, which apparently she does, which is great. For someone who has apparently been someone else for like two years, she was able to become herself again pretty quickly, which is good, I guess. <laughs> but all of this brings us to our beautiful ending of this story with the Ski Lodge episode, so on to chapter Chapter 5. So we start off with Riley saying that they paused the triangle so that Maya could find herself, and Lucas makes a comment saying that she has after Maya makes fun of him. Which is another thing that again makes no sense because Maya was teasing him at the start of the season and throughout the entire triangle, so I don't understand where we got lost there. Anyways, we then have, I believe, the third time in which someone has proclaimed that they need to make a decision about the triangle, but I guess it's actually going to happen this time, so that's great. So we start off with Lucas saying that he has made his choice, but he feels as though his decision shouldn't just be about him. Now I feel like this would only be the case if he actually did like both of them equally, which we all know isn't the case. So I feel like he should just say who he chose and then we can move on. But I guess that would just be too easy. So instead he says that if they're actually going to decide this, then they need to imagine what their lives would be like together. And I'm just like, dude, like how old are you? Like 15? Like what are you doing talking about the rest of your lives? Second of all, we're back to pointing out their differences. So what was the point of the Maya became Riley thing if this just proves that he liked them because they were different? I'm so confused. This hurts my brain. Anyways, the rest of this episode is kind of a write off with Maya telling the story of them as a secret agent couple whose world ends up blowing up in the end and Riley telling a rom-com-like story in which she dies in the end. So this brings us to part two, which really feeds into the whole Boy Meets World ski lodge type story, at least as far as the beginning of this episode is concerned. First of all, Riley meets Evan, who is basically like Riley's version of Lauren, which we find out by the end of the episode is even more so the case when it's hinted at that his mother is Lauren. But history repeats itself as they end up staying up all night together talking and then Lucas ends up getting very upset by this. It was really great talking to you, Evan, but I have to get upstairs right now before. She's wearing the same clothes. Who's that? While we're wearing new, different clothes. Who's that? She looks sleepy to me. Yeah, that one there. Who is that? Ma, Dad! You got caught, kid? You know what helps, though? Nothing! <laughs> And then the rest of this episode just kind of turns into a bunch of one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions, starting off with Josh and Riley. Josh has apparently just been lurking in the bushes or something, because we actually haven't seen him since season two, episode six. So it's been like an entire season in which he just hasn't been here, but apparently he knows so much about this entire situation. So he is convinced that Maya only liked Lucas to protect her and kind of like try him out for herself, which is just so twisted and counterintuitive to his whole argument. Because he's saying that she did this because she's a good friend, whereas I personally feel like if if this actually is the case, that makes her the complete opposite. Trying out your best friend's boyfriend for them, like that is so delusional. No good friends would do that to one another and it just makes absolutely no sense. I also feel like it's worth pointing out that while Josh hasn't really been present for any of this, he does still kind of have ulterior motives because apparently everybody in this show does. Although he denies it, he does like Maya. We learn that in this episode, it's just kind of hidden behind all of his cryptic speaking, but nonetheless, he does have feelings for Maya. So while he's spewing off all of this garbage, don't forget the fact that he does like Maya. Like, he's not innocent in any of this. So then we have the Maya and Josh conversation that makes me want to vomit, and before I explain why, I will play it for you all as a refresher. What I've also noticed, Maya, is that you've cared about Riley so much for so long that the moment she decides to care about somebody else... Lucas? You needed to protect her. How? You needed to see if she was safe with him. Yeah, well, how could I possibly do that? Well, let's see, all right? You lose yourself and become like her, so you get to know him like she knows him. I mean, what a great way to see if he's good enough for your best friend. I was protecting her. But she would do the same for you. She did. She brought me back. So now that you're you? I don't like Lucas like that. How do you know? I went out with him one time, poured a smoothie on his head. In a cute romantic way? No. And he's so nice, I wanted to mess him up kind of way. <laughs> he's perfect for Riley. I know because when you're Riley, it's hard not to like him. That was the first thing I found out. When you were Riley? Yes. But now I'm me. How do you feel now? 
I feel like if you know me at all, then you know the last thing I would ever do is want anything that was Riley's. Why? Because I love her. I always have, and she loves me. We would never take from each other, and there's nothing that could ever happen to change that. Good. Good. You know, that's a real adult way of thinking. Thank you, Josh. So first of all, Josh is really hammering home the whole try him out for yourself thing, which just makes me feel so icky. And the whole comment where he's like, what a great way to see if he's good enough for your best friend. And I'm just like, no, I disagree. I don't think that that's a great way at all, actually, but we already went over that. And it's also just like, I can't get over the fact that this was a children's show. So they're like telling kids that like, yeah, just go try out your bestie's boyfriend, see if he's good. It means you're a good friend. Like, no, stop, <laughs> full stop. This is so weird and messed up. I don't like it at all. Then there's the point that Maya makes where she says if you know her at all the last thing that she would want is something that is Riley's which I'm just like yes that's what I've been saying all along like that was my whole point with the Texas thing which is that you were pushing your feelings down because you didn't want to betray your friendship with Riley. And now for the most important part in all of this which is the fact that Maya looks up to Josh like she idolizes him in a way because of this crush that she has on him and I feel like he is using that to his advantage here. It's a really unhealthy power dynamic as far as I'm concerned and it's one of the main reasons why I will never ship these two together because Josh could literally say anything to Maya in this moment and she would just eat it right up. So this brings us to the Maya and Lucas conversation in which she basically says that she knows that he chose Riley and then she also has this like personal discovery that she doesn't actually want a nice guy, which is a weird moment because I feel like that was something that we already knew. Like we knew that she liked Lucas because of his bad boy past and so I'm not too sure why it's treated like it's some big revelation here. Nonetheless, she encourages him to go find Riley and tell her that he loves her, which brings us to this scene between Riley and Lucas that finally puts the triangle to rest. We always said that the most important thing was that nobody got hurt. Will Maya be okay? She's the one who sent me to you. So this is our moment? Mm-hmm. I promised you that my moment would be my moment. This is it. Ah, I got you this. Maya! <laughs> The jelly bean. Stay where you are! <laughs> what does it mean? We put these jelly beans on a scale when I was trying to think about all the things that I like about you. When I was trying to decide what I needed to do. That means you, Riley. I choose you. And I really <laughs> want you to choose me. I do. So I feel like I've always said that I felt like these two have zero chemistry in this scene. And this time around, while I do still agree with that, I just wanted to take a moment to highlight Rowan in this scene because I feel like she's giving a lot more than he is. And it makes me wonder if the lack of chemistry is more so just on his part. To be fair, they have put his character through quite a lot in these past two seasons. And if Peyton was just kind of done at this point, I honestly wouldn't blame the guy. Or maybe he was team Lukaya and just couldn't get behind him choosing Riley. I mean, who's to say? Part of me also almost wishes that Riley didn't make it as easy for him as she did. Like, I feel like if I was her and just had to experience what he put her through, I would have told him to go away at this point. But I guess by saying that, I'm also kind of ignoring the part where she denied her feelings for him and basically forced him to be with Maya for a hot minute. So I guess they're both guilty in this situation. And that's basically where our story comes to an end, which is another frustrating part because we just went through that whole mess and then didn't even get any good ship content afterwards. And so I'm just left spinning, wondering what on earth was the point of any of that. We do get some content in Girl Meets Bear though. The two of them share a moment in her room where they talk about the value of things when they come from somebody special. But there was also this moment at the beginning of this episode where he doesn't want to stay and help her look for her bear, which just baffled me because I'm just like, aren't you supposed to be her boyfriend? Like, if there's anybody that should be supporting her in this, I feel like it should be you. Also, Maya jumps on his back at one point in this episode and he tells her to get off because she lost, but it's unclear as to if he's referring to the triangle or the fact that she wanted to go get tacos. I feel like it's the taco thing, but like, I still feel like that was a weird thing to throw in there. And then in a shocking twist, but also not really, Zay then inserts 
inserts himself into the situation and says that he'll be Maya's date while Riley and Lucas are together so that she doesn't feel left out, which I thought was a nice gesture on his part, and it's sad that we never really got to see that go anywhere. A couple episodes later, when Lucas says that the most important relationship in Riley's life is them, as in him and Riley, she, along with the rest of the class, laughs in response, which I know is supposed to be a reference to the girls' friendship and nothing being more important than that, but the fact that this is one of the only times in which their relationship has even been brought up since the events of Ski Lodge and it's to laugh at it is just so frustrating. Then what's even more frustrating is a couple episodes later when Lucas goes to Texas for the holidays and they make a point to mention that he left without even telling Riley. It's almost like they want us to treat their relationship like a joke and I am just so confused. All of this brings us to the finale in which they treat their relationship like it's nothing once again as this is the first and last scene we get between the two of them. No matter whatever happens to me in my whole life, you will always be my first girlfriend. Years from now, whenever anybody asks me, who was your first girlfriend? I will always answer Riley Matthews. And I will always answer Lucas Fryer. I hope that you get to be a veterinarian someday. And I hope that wherever you are, you get to keep being Riley. It's so incredibly unsatisfying for them to put us through what they did in the past three seasons and then just give us nothing. Like, I'm not even a Ruka shipper, like, I just want a decent story. The scene feels like a breakup, and they're both just, like, so calm with the idea of her leaving, and then we don't even get a moment of excitement between the two of them when they find out that she isn't. And I know I've said this a million times, but I'm just like, what was the point? Like, I know that they were planning on having another season and that this wasn't going to be the end, but I feel like they had to be preparing for them to get cancelled by the fact that they titled this episode Girl Meets Goodbye and included all of those Boy Meets World cameos. So if Riley and Lucas really were the endgame that they planned for all along, like, I just feel like they deserved more of a conclusion than that. And this is a personal opinion, but I also feel like the show was backtracking ever since the whole ski lodge mess. They had regretted spending so much time on this love triangle and wanted to get the viewers back into the headspace that Riley and Maya was the important relationship that we should be caring about. They had this perfect friendship and nothing could break them, even though we all know that that's not true just based off of the events that we covered in this video. But I still feel like they could have given us that same friendship content between the two of them while also giving Riley and Lucas some actual substance as well, instead of just kicking them to the curb. And I know that I've said this a million times, but by not doing that, it really just made the whole triangle plotline feel like a complete waste of time. And on that note, I believe that is where we're gonna have to wrap up this love story. My brain basically feels like mush at this point, and I don't want to have to think about any of these characters again for a very long time. And listen, I love Girl Meets World. It was one of my absolute favorite shows throughout my high school years, but it is one that I feel like there is no way I'll ever be able to go back and rewatch. Even just rewatching what I did for this video, like I feel like I now have a whole new perspective on this show and what it was. Maybe it's because I just recently did my rewatch of Boy Meets World and it was so much better, or maybe I'm just too old now, or maybe Girl Meets World is just one of those shows that should just stay in my past. But either way, I wanna know how you guys felt about this triangle. Which team were you back then? Which team are you now? How much do you care now? I would love to know all about it, so please leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, that's all I have to say for today. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. And also, as always, let me know who you guys want me to cover next. I know I did say that I wanted to do Casey and Brett next, and that is still true, so I'm sure you'll see a video about them eventually. I actually wasn't planning for this video to be a love story video, it just kind of turned into that because I originally just wanted to focus on the triangle and then I realized if I'm going to be talking about Riley and Lucas and Maya and Lucas together, I'm probably never going to talk about them on their own. So we might as well just like talk about them in depth and make it a love story. And so that is how we ended up with this video, which is probably very long. I apologize, but I hope that you enjoyed it at least. Um, I hope you guys like my background. I don't know. I kind of got insecure in like the middle of this video and I was like, what if people hate it? What am I going to do? Um, but I feel like you guys won't. You guys are really nice and I trust your guys' judgment too. Like if you did hate it, we'd figure something out together because that's how this relationship works. <laughs> Anyways, that's all from me. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm not too sure what video to do the next week and so I'm kind of stressing about that. But I was thinking maybe like a Q&A with my boyfriend. Do you guys care? Like, I don't know. I feel like I talk about him too much and I really like don't even really talk about him at all. <laughs> but I've never really had a boyfriend in the time in which I've had this channel and so I'm like, I feel like I should be taking advantage of that. We need to get him on here. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to meet him, let me know. <laughs> I'm gonna get all insecure like do you guys want to meet my boyfriend? <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna leave See you later <laughs> Bye, I don't know why I'm pushing away from you. I have to turn the camera off. I just love having a rolling chair Okay, this has gone to chaos. I need to turn the camera off <laughs>